G'day folks, my name is Nick. This little blue boat behind me is my Carreal 18 Trailer Sailor Second Wind. And in part two of these videos that I'm doing about the Carreal 18s, I'm going to be talking about how I fitted my boat's trailer up with a electric trailer winch. So before we get started, I should have a little bit of a talk about the trailer. I have a tilt trailer where this is a pivot point and this is the, the locking system. So the whole trailer will tilt up. So the boat goes back a couple of feet, the whole thing tilts up and it'll launch the boat pretty much like it's coming out of the back of a dump truck. It's mildly dramatic and mildly exciting, but very effective way of launching the boat. The big advantage of it is, is that I can launch and retrieve the boat in much shallower water than what a conventional trailer uh, requires. In fact, all I've got to do, part of my muddy wheels, is get the water just to the rim and that's enough or deep enough for me to be able to launch the boat. One of the secondary advantages of the tilt trailer is that I keep all the major components dry. As I'm only putting the top of the tire into the water, my wheel bearings, my brakes, my axle, the actual structure of the trailer itself, pretty much all stays out of the water, which is very good for the trailer, especially in my case where I tend to launch uh, in salt water only. If there was a downside, because I'm not burying the trailer in the water to retrieve it, it means that the boat has to be literally dragged up and out of the water onto the trailer, and that means it's quite a hard job uh, to winch it up and out. I was finding when I was cranking the boat up that I was saying a bit of a sore shoulder, so I wanted to have a look at some different winch options, maybe like a, a 10 to 1 ratio. This one's a 5 to 1. And what I found, for about the same money, maybe a little bit less, I could buy one of these brandless Chinese electric trailer winches. Now to fit it up, I had to buy a new trailer winch base because it was too long to fit on this one. But in all fairness, the couple of the manual ones were also too long to fit on this trailer winch base. It's quite short. This wasn't very expensive. They're only like $70. It's galvanized. Um, it might have been $100, but it was only that around that sort of amount of money. A couple of view bolts, and it all just bolts straight up. The advantage of this one is I was able to move the original winch up higher. I've still got enough clearance to get the winch in and out. And this is my backup winch of, in case this one fails. It also is what I use to lock the boat onto the trailer, plus the, the safety chain as well. So what it comes with, you get a corded remote up and down. You only get about three metres of cable, which wasn't quite enough for me to be able to hold this and get to the end of the trailer to guide the boat onto the trailer. Mind you, I could probably cut the cable and add another meter or so to it. It comes with a mounting plate. It comes with the uh, manual crank handle. I paid up and got the cordless remote, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, and for me, this is a real game changer. Uh, plus the usual electrical connection with a couple of uh, alligator clamps. To power it, I just got a battery and I'll just, Move over here so you can see the size of battery. I got this on special, it says $99. I got it for about 70 bucks. It's just a car battery and it's perfect. It means that I, I'm not locked into this particular car to use the electric winch. I can change cars and I've got more than one car at home that I can tow the boat with. So that's very convenient. I did price to have a cable run from the front of the car to an Anderson plug in the boot. And that was going to be like $400, so much easier, much cheaper option. I simply charge the battery when I get home. It's all fully charged back up in about 20 minutes. And before I go out, uh, the day before, I normally give it a quick zot just to make sure she's fully charged up. And this works perfectly. Operationally, I just plug the cable into the side of the unit. That just goes to my battery, positive and negative. Now if I come around the other side, 
It's got a friction clutch here, so if you're familiar with the power winch brand, it's exactly the same. Just, like that, just pull a bit of cable out, tighten it up, and I could be standing anywhere. I could be standing up on the deck or on the side of the seawall. And up she goes. Simple as that. If I want to go out, it needs a bit of weight on it to pull it out, but I can just back it off with the with the remote. Once I'm done, unhook it, come around, unplug it, throw it all back in the boot. Once it's all unplugged, I've unhitched it, you just pick it up and take it away and pop it back in the back of the car. Easy as that. When I compare my cheap Chinese brandless trailer winch uh, to one of my friends who has the same sort of boat but has one of the good quality American power winches. He's had it for over 10 years, never given him any uh, issues. Operationally speaking, the main difference between the two units tends to be the line speed. His one's two to three times faster than mine. So what that means real world is that he gets his boat on the trailer in about a minute and I take two to three minutes. Not a big difference, and I suppose in the real world sort of conditions, you don't really notice it. But that's the main operational difference between the two units. So I suppose the question now is, how long will these units last? Well, it definitely works well. It brings the boat up the trailer very nicely, and I'm incredibly happy with it. But what's the longevity like? Well, time will tell, I suppose. But so far, I've had it for... Just on two years, it's had plenty of use and it hasn't given me any troubles so far. And hopefully it, it, it will give me many more years of good service. But that might be for a later video.